What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, I'm doing a deck profile on the Inteleon V Max League Battle deck and teaching you how to play it. I'll also be playing the deck on the PTCGO versus ladder after the deck profile, so be sure to stay tuned through the whole video. And if you have not already watched my review of this product, be sure to check out that video, which I'll link in the description down below. Before we get into this video though, shout out to potownstore.com, my lovely sponsor and the best place to buy PTCGO codes online. Be sure to use code CELIO to save yourself 5% off when shopping there. Also subscribe to my channel for daily Pokemon TCG content if you're enjoying the videos. Now let's get into the Inteleon V Max League Battle deck. We'll start with Inteleon V because Inteleon V Max is the main Pokemon of the deck and it evolves from Inteleon V so we have to use this Pokemon at some point. Inteleon V while being the pre-evolution, not the main focus of the deck, it does have two decent attacks, Snipe Shot being the better of the two. Inteleon V is a basic V Pokemon with 200 in HP, it's water type, weak to lightning, and it has two retreat cost. The V rule, which you'll see on all V Pokemon, is that when your Pokemon V is knocked out, your opponent takes two prize cards, and the V Max rule is similar in that your opponent takes three prize cards. Any Pokemon without these rule boxes just gives up the generic one prize card. Inteleon V's Snipe Shot needs one water energy, and the attack does 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, so that could be either in the active position or the benched Pokemon. So this Snipe Shot's pretty good because it can set up damage for later on in the game, and it's a pretty decent attack to have on your V version of the V Max, since V Pokemon are typically not what you want to be attacking with, but if you have to, this Snipe Shot's a pretty decent attack for just one energy. Aqua Report costs Water Water Colorless and it does 130 damage and then your opponent reveals their hand. This is a pretty mediocre attack and of course if you have to use it, 130 damage is better than nothing, but you'd really like to be doing a little bit more since you're using a V Pokemon. So. Uh, snipe shot's fine on the early turns or even in the late game to finish up a knockout, but you really want to be attacking with Inteleon VMAX, which we'll look at next. Inteleon VMAX is your main attacker of the deck. It has 320 HP. It's a water type, of course, weak to lightning, just like the V version, and it has two retreat costs. Inteleon VMAX has two great attacks, and you can truthfully customize an Inteleon VMAX deck to focus around the strategy of either Hydro Snipe or Max Bullet, or you can have a deck like this that can use either one depending on the situation and the matchup. Hydra Snipe for one water energy does 60 damage to the active Pokemon, and then you may put an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand. This attack for just one energy doing 60 damage is fairly efficient, and then the addition of removing an opponent's active Pokemon's energy and forcing it back into their hand is really, really good, especially against main attacking Pokemon that need two or three or even four energy to use their big attacks. Now, sometimes you'll only be using Hydra Snipe if you don't have enough energy for Max Bullet, but there are other times when Hydra Snipe is actually the better attack, which I love to see on VMAX Pokemon. Max Bullet costs Water Water Colorless and does 160 damage, but it also does 60 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon for a total of 220 damage of value. So you can set up a knockout for later on on the bench or even finish up some damage that you missed earlier and take a knockout there on the bench while doing a considerable amount of damage of 160 to the active Pokemon. Now let's say you're facing an opponent's VMAX Pokemon that has about the same amount of HP as Inteleon, which is 320. Max Bullet doing 160 will knock out the defending VMAX Pokemon in just two attacks, which is very good. So with Inteleon VMAX being the main attacker of the deck, the rest of the deck is built to help support it and help the deck function smoothly and as consistently as possible. We'll take a look next at Frostmoth, which evolves from Snom. Snom is pretty much just there to evolve into Frostmoth. Unfortunately, Snom does not have much to offer, but Frostmoth has the ability Ice Dance, which is all it's going to be used for. It has really low HP, a mediocre attack, nothing else to say, just the ability Ice Dance. But this ability is monumental because it breaks one of the integral rules of the Pokemon TCG, which is you may attach one energy a turn to one of your Pokemon. 
Ice Stance says, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a water energy card from your hand to one of your benched water Pokemon. Now, albeit that is specific, it has to be to a benched water Pokemon and it has to be a water energy. All we're really using in this deck is water Pokemon, and it's quite easy to move Pokemon from the active to the bench and vice versa with cards like Bird Keeper, Air Balloon, and Scoop Up Net in our deck. So this Frost Moth is very, very powerful to accelerate water energy down onto our Inteleon V or Inteleon V Max. The Stage 2 Inteleon line is a support Pokemon line in this deck. The Sobble does not really matter again like the Snom, it's just there with the Pound and Water Gun attack for 10 and 20 respectively. It, it's there to evolve into Drizzle and then furthermore Inteleon. So Drizzle has the ability Shady Dealings. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may search your deck for a trainer card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Anytime you get to search out any trainer card you want in the Pokemon trading card game, that ability is worth noting. Trainer cards help the deck function and help you search out the exact cards you need and help you draw more cards, manipulate your opponent's board, switch out your Pokemon. They do a plethora of things and Drizzle getting any single trainer card you need out of your deck into your hand is really great. The Stage 2 Inteleon has the same ability, Shady Dealings, except it's even better because it's on a Stage 2 and it's stronger. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, which will be Drizzle, you may search your deck for up to two trainer cards, reveal them and put them into your hand. Getting any two trainer cards gives you a lot of room to make decisions. You can get a Professor's Research that draws you seven new cards. You can get an Air Balloon that makes your retreat cost on your Pokemon two colorless less. You can get an Evolution Incense to search out your Inteleon VMAX that you need. You can get a Scoop Up Net to pick up Galarian Zigzagoon and reuse it. The possibilities are quite endless and they're only confined by the amount of trainer cards and which trainer cards you decide to put in your deck. So the Drizzle and Inteleon are very, very good search options to have, and I expect them to be seeing a lot more play and post rotation outside of Inteleon VMAX decks. The last water Pokemon we'll look at is Suicune, which has 120 HP, and it is a regular Pokemon. It's not a V or a V Max, it's only giving up one prize card if it's knocked out. So it's Aurora Loop Attack for. 130 damage that costs three energy is actually not too bad and it also puts two water energy attached to it back to the hand after attacking so if this gets knocked out you don't lose all the energy you can then put them onto like an Inteleon V or V Max afterwards with Frost Moth. So the Aurora Loop attack is nice to have in this deck because it gets around Pokemon like Decidueye that cannot be hit by V or V Max and around Zamazenta V which cannot be hit by V Max so it gives you a Another option of a kind of Pokemon to attack with. Sometimes you'll even want to attack with a single prize Pokemon instead of Inteleon VMAX just by choice, so that if your opponent knocks it out, they don't win the game by taking all of their prize cards. They'll only take one off the Suicune, and then you can send out Inteleon VMAX after and get more value out of your Pokemon for the Pokemon is Galarian Zigzagoon with the ability Headbutt Tantrum. Headbutt Tantrum reads when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may put one damage counter on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Now just one damage counter may not sound like a lot when there's Pokemon with over 300 HP out there, but one damage counter can make or break an entire game. With the amount of damage that we can spread around the opponent's board with Inteleon V Snipe Shot and Inteleon V Max's Max Bullet, Galarian Zigzagoon's Headbutt Tantrum can actually really help clean up knockouts or even set up knockouts on the opponent's active Pokemon, preparing for an upcoming attack from Inteleon V Max. Something very nice about Galarian Zigzagoon is that we can essentially reuse the Headbutt Tantrum ability with Scoop Up Net, which we will get into in a moment when we cover the trainer cards. That's it for the Pokemon of the deck, now I'm moving on to the trainers and I'd like to start with the supporters. Since you can only play one supporter per turn, the supporters are typically some of the stronger trainer cards you have. Professor's Research is seen as a staple card in the Pokemon TCG standard format currently. A staple card means that it is a card used across many and most, if not all, decks in the format because it is seen as being that necessary. Professor's Research has a pretty simple effect. Discard your hand and draw seven cards. Now discarding your hand might seem like a steep cost to pay, but the value of drawing seven cards is so good in the Pokemon 
on TCG that you don't really mind discarding your hand in most situations. This card is included as a four of in this deck, and I think that is perfect for this deck, and honestly, so many decks will play four of Professor's Research, so it's a good card to have as well. Next, we have three Marnie in this deck, and just a small caveat that I thought might be helpful. I'm saying we have three Marnie in this deck, but this number down here on the screen shows four. The number here on the screen, you might not know, shows how many of the card you have in your collection, and then when you close out and minimize the card you'll see down here it says we have three in the deck just a small note that might be helpful to you but we do have three marnie in the deck and marnie is quite a unique supporter card for the pokemon trading card game it reads that each player shuffles their hand and then puts it on the bottom of their deck not shuffling it into the deck though if either player puts any cards on the bottom of their deck in this way, you draw five and your opponent draws four. So basically, regardless of how many cards are in your opponent's hand and are in your hand, you both shuffle your hands and then put it onto the bottom of the deck. Then you draw five and you draw four. This can be seen as a consistency card to help you draw cards. It can also be seen as a disruption card to mess up your opponent's hand. So this is a card that is also seen as a staple in the standard format, much like Professor's Research. Very good card to have and a very good card in this deck. Next, we are playing three Boss's Orders. Boss's Orders, again, kind of has a simple effect. A lot of supporter cards do, even if they're really, really good. Boss's Orders lets you switch one of your opponent's benched Pokemon with their active Pokemon. This is one of the strongest and most game pivoting supporter cards in the game right now, since you can bring up a weak Pokemon or a previously damaged Pokemon that's on your opponent's benched and make it their active Pokemon so you can then attack it with one of your larger damage attacks. Look out for Pokemon on your opponent's bench like the Dene GX, Eldegoss V, and Crobat V, which have a range of 160 to 180 HP and will be quite easy for this deck to take advantage of and knock out when you bring it up to the active with boss's orders. The last supporter card in the deck is Bird Keeper, which reads, switch your active Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon, and if you do, draw three cards. This is really great because Frostmoth can only accelerate energy to the benched Pokemon, so sometimes we'll want our Inteleon VMAX on the bench to attach energy to it, but then we need to switch it from bench to active. This allows us to do that while also drawing cards, so this is a really good supporter to have in the deck. Next, looking at stadium cards, we do only have one and one copy of it, and that is Training Court. Training Court reads, once during each player's turn, that player may put a basic energy card from their discard pile into their hand. Now, something to note about stadium cards is that they will typically help both sides. They are usable by both players, regardless of which player put it into play. So if Training Court is going to help your opponent more than it will help you, possibly hold it in your hand until you need it. Moving on to item cards, we have Capacious Bucket, which we have two copies of in this deck list. It reads, search your deck for up to two water energy cards, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. This is good because it synergizes well with Frostmoth, which allows you to attach as many water energy as you like to your benched water Pokemon. Since this searches out two water energy cards, it's pretty good to have in a deck with Frostmoth. We have two Evolution Incense, which searches your deck for an Evolution Pokemon. We have a lot of Evolution Pokemon happening in this deck, from Inteleon VMAX to Frostmoth to Drizzle and Inteleon Stage 2, so Evolution Incense has a lot of value being in this deck. We have four Great Ball, which allows you to look at the top seven cards of your deck. You may reveal a Pokemon you find there and put it into your hand, shuffle the other cards back into your deck. Pokemon Search is very good to have because you get to see more Pokemon, you have more options, you get to play down more Pokemon, start evolving and setting them up. So having uh, two Evolution Incense, four Great Ball, and then we also have four Quick Ball, which reads, you can play this card only if you discard another from your hand. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it into your hand. So we have Quick Ball getting only basics, Evolution Incense getting only evolutions, and then Great Ball, which can get any Pokemon that's in the top seven cards of our deck. We only have one way to get Pokemon back in this deck once they've been knocked out or discarded, and that is Ordinary Rod. Ordinary Rod reads, choose one or both. Shuffle up to two Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. Shuffle up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck. So you can either shuffle up to two Pokemon, up to two basic energy, or up to two Pokemon and up to two basic energy. 
Like I mentioned earlier, we have two scoop up net in the deck and scoop up net reads, put one of your Pokemon that is not a V or GX Pokemon into your hand and discard all cards attached to that card. This is mostly going to be used for Galarian Zigzagoon so you can reuse Headbutt Tantrum, but it can also be used on a Drizzle or Inteleon so you can reuse those abilities or even any non V Pokemon that you just need to get out of the active position or you wanna pick up off of your bench. The last item card we have in this deck is three copies of Air Balloon, which is a tool card that you attach to a Pokemon that does not already have a tool card attached to it. When attached to a Pokemon, the retreat cost of the Pokemon this card is attached to is two colorless less. Now, if you'll look at this deck, every Pokemon in this deck has a retreat cost of two or less. So attaching an Air Balloon to any of these Pokemon will essentially give them free retreat. And then lastly, wrapping up the deck, we have 10 basic water energy, and that is the whole 60 cards. If you have any more questions about this deck, how any of the cards work or any strategies, please leave that in the comments down below and stay tuned for the gameplay that we're going to roll in just a minute. I hope you enjoyed this deck profile and enjoy the gameplay. Okay, so we're taking the Inteleon VMAX League Battle Deck into the standard format versus ladder on Pokemon TCG Online. Our opponent called the coin flip and I won the coin flip. I'm going to choose to go first since I have many Pokemon in this deck that evolve and I want to start getting down their basic forms. This is actually a very good hand and I'm going first, which means I can't attack. I think I want to start out with Suicune in the active because I want Inteleon V on the bench for next turn when I hopefully evolve into Frostmoth and can accelerate a bunch of energy to it. So I'm going to have Suicune in the active, Snom, and Inteleon V on the bench. And we're playing against Eternatus. So this is uh, an Eternatus VMAX deck, which is a popular deck in the standard format right now. So it's nice that we're playing against a kind of a well-known and competitive and relevant archetype here with the Inteleon deck to test it out. So my strategy against Eternatus is since the Eternatus VMAX needs two energy for its main attack, which can do a maximum of 270 damage, I'm probably going to want to try to use Inteleon VMAX's Hydro Snipe to keep returning their energy to their hand. If I wanted to really capitalize on this strategy, I would want to add maybe some Crushing Hammers and Team Yell Grunts to the deck. Okay, so they bench coughing, which means they're playing Galarian Wheezing. They bench a Crobat to draw up to six cards. They have a power plant out, but we don't have any GX abilities, so that will not bother us at all. They used Building Spite to damage their Spirit Tomb so that their Anguish Cry can do more damage next turn. And then they're going to use Power Accelerator. Looks like they have a basic Dark Energy to attach with the effect of that attack. Okay, and it's going to go to Coughing. Now we got the Frost Moth, which is really nice. Like I said, I kind of want to just get Inteleon VMAX and be able to Hydro Snipe. There is a thought of Bird Keeper and then hope we draw into Inteleon VMAX plus a Water Energy. But I think using Professor's Research is just much better. Uh, we can play down this Zigzagoon because we can just scoop it up later on and use it again. So I'm going to play down this Zigzagoon and put uh, a damage counter on Eternatus and then research. So discard my hand at draw seven. Let's see what we get here. Hmm. We have... I'm trying to think. So if we get a Drizzle off of Great Ball, that could get us... An evolution incense or if we just get an Inteleon VMAX off of Great Ball. So what I'm going to do here is thin out my deck, which means I'm searching out cards uh, just to give myself better odds of drawing the cards that I need with a random card. So Great Ball is pretty random, right? We look at the top seven and get a Pokemon. Uh, so I want the Pokemon that I need to be in the top seven. So we're looking for either a Drizzle or an Inteleon VMAX with this Great Ball. So I want to thin out the deck first before uh, doing anything else. So we'll just drop a Water Energy because we don't need a ton of them this turn. Uh, we'll get another Sobble because Sobbles are good to have on the bench, possibly. This next bench spot might actually be for an Inteleon, but like I said, we want to... Uh, 
we want to thin out the deck. So now Great Ball looking for a Drizzle or an Inteleon VMAX to help this plan come together. And we do have Inteleon VMAX, so that's really great. Now, the way we're going to orchestrate this plan is evolve the Inteleon VMAX. We're going to use Frostmoth's ability to put one energy to the benched Inteleon. Click done because we're done using the Ice Dance ability. And then we're going to attach for turn to the active to retreat. Now we retreat into Inteleon VMAX and we're going to bench Inteleon V here. And this boss's orders is actually a great follow up for next turn. So we're going to Hydra Snipe 60 and return that energy to their hand. So now they can't use Eternatus VMAX's main attack next turn. And if they switch the Eternatus V to the bench to then attach to it again, we have boss's orders ready to go. This Crushing Hammer could be a problem though. Okay, they got Tails, so that's good. Crushing Hammer, if Heads, would have discarded the energy from our Inteleon VMAX. So it's good that that did not happen because although we got to do exactly what I wanted to do last turn, our board is uh, a little bit lacking and our, our board is actually pretty good, but our hand is lacking. We don't have draw power and you kind of want to be able to draw cards or draw new cards every turn. So we're going to kind of be playing off the top deck and see what we get there. But like I said, if our opponent switches out the Eternatus, we could just boss it up again. Oh, they're going to boss us. Okay, that could be an issue. We'll have to see what happens here. So they boss up the Frost Moth, actually. Okay. Yeah, that's an issue as of now. So we'll have to see what we get off the top of our deck. There's many cards that could help us, ranging from Marnie, Bird Keeper, Research, Air Balloon, or an Evolution Incense or Great Ball to get a Drizzle. That could help too. So Power Accelerator 30 and then pass. Let's see what we get off the top. We do get a Drizzle. That's actually so good. That's a fantastic draw. So we're going to play down Drizzle and search our deck for any trainer card. Uh, we are actually out of Bird Keeper. So that means one Bird Keeper is in the prize cards. Bird Keeper would have been better there, but I think I'm just going to take Air Balloon because that's a guaranteed use. Yeah, so this guarantees that we get to use, to retreat our Frostmoth. And next turn, we can evolve that Drizzle into Inteleon and get extra value out of that evolution line. So this is completely fine. We'll just do this and Hydra Snipe, return the energy again and do 60 damage. So we've got a really, really nice thing going on here. And you'll notice we're not even trying to use Max Bullet yet because Hydra Snipe is actually just better at the moment. And remember, guys, this is all with the $25 to $30 Inteleon VMAX League Battle Deck. This is straight out of the box, scanned into PTCGO with the code card. No changes made. And uh, we're rocking here versus a uh, popular meta deck, Eternatus VMAX, which they haven't even evolved into the VMAX yet because they can't keep their energy on the board because we keep Hydra sniping it. So I'm, I'm having a heck of a good time here. And next turn we can get any two trainers and they scooped <laughs> they, they conceded they gave us the win that's amazing let's go <laughs> that's so good all right in this match it looks like we're playing against a mad party deck now they are single prize focused so they can prize trade better against us but we can take multiple knockouts in a turn if we get max bullet going. The bad thing here is we uh, we don't have that great of a setup. So I'm not really sure what I want to do here. I, I could attach so that I can retreat one of these next turn. But there's a great chance that this Snom is getting knocked out. So I think... I think I will attach here because it looks like I might just be researching this hand away next turn. So I'll attach to Snom and pass. Sometimes going first 
can actually be bad for you because you don't get to play any supporter cards but when you're playing a lot of evolutions going first is typically good because you get to get down your initial basics and then start evolving earlier so our opponent plays a level ball for a Mancino. so it looks like they are playing a chinchino draw engine in addition to the typical mad party cards and then that's also a wimp pod okay so some interesting stuff going on in our opponent's deck here um and our snob doesn't get knocked out so maybe i attached to the wrong one um evolution incense can go ahead and grab us a frost moth and this frost moth now has an energy attached to it maybe that'll come in handy at some point uh because i was really just expecting that active to be knocked out but not uh things don't always go as you expect them to so we'll go ahead and research this hand away and uh, we get some good stuff going on here. Let's see. So we've got we've got Sobble, we've got Inteleon. Hmm. So I suppose. Yeah, so I could have attached water energy to the active there on the Snom. So that might be a misplay not attaching water energy to Snom so I can then later retreat. Um, since I have this energy, but then I don't have any more to go off of with it. So that definitely was a mistake, I think, but hopefully it won't cost us too much. Uh, this great ball, I think I'll hold on to, and we'll just attach here to Inteleon V and pass. We only have one energy, so no need to activate the ice dance ability, but you could if you wanted to. Yeah, so I could have actually gotten a knockout there with Snipe Shot if I had attached to the Snom first, because then I could Ice Dance more energy onto the Inteleon V on the bench. So definitely an oversight on my part. Our opponent evolves into the Pultigeist and use the T-Break ability uh, to discard a Pokemon that has the Mad Party attack and then draw two cards. Okay, and then they're going to Marnie us. Now, so this is exactly why I don't just play down that Great Ball last turn, because I might have gotten a Pokemon like Drizzle or Inteleon that I can't play down yet, and then that Great Ball would have been wasted. So our opponent gets a Crobat V, which that could be good for us because they're playing down multi-prize Pokemon. So that could help us later on if we want to try knocking that out. And a popular card in Mad Party is the Mew with Bench Barrier, which prevents bench damage. And they do not have that on the board yet. They might not even have it in their deck. So that means that we can potentially start racking up bench damage with Inteleon VMAX. Of course, we'll have to get the Inteleon VMAX down first. So that's, uh, that's an obstacle we'll have to get through. But... Our opponent does not attack again, uh, still not drawing into any of their special energy to attack with, which is great for us. Special energy, of course, they have like twin energy that can allow them to use Mad Party for just one energy attachment. And Mad Party can do a ton of damage, but special energy you can only play four copies of in your deck. So there's pros and cons to most deck strategies and most ways to build decks. We have Training Court here, which will never help our opponent if they're only playing Special Energy, which most Mad Party decks only play Special Energy. So I think that is safe to assume. I'm going to Ice Dance to this Inteleon. And uh, well, also Training Court. So I could have done all that in one smooth motion, but I didn't. But I could have. It's okay. You can activate Ice Dance multiple times a turn. Uh, we'll go ahead and Great Ball prior to our Marnie. And I think I will take Inteleon VMAX. So uh, we've got some we've got some options here. I'm going to scoop up Net the Snom to get it out of the active. We'll send up Inteleon VMAX. Note that I made sure I attached all my energy to Inteleon VMAX before it was in the active, because Ice Dance can only attach the benched water Pokemon, not in the active. Now we don't need a second Snom right now, and I don't think they'll be gusting up Frost Moth and knocking it out, because then they would leave my Inteleon VMAX undamaged. So I'm gonna shuffle the Snom back into the deck. Um, here, I think I wanna start setting up a second Inteleon V. So I'm going to 
evolve this Sobble into Drizzle and search for a trainer card. And that trainer card is going to be Quick Ball. And make sure we have, yep, we have Inteleon V and VMAX in the deck. So we'll do this. <laughs> and then we can just get back that Water Energy next turn with Training Court. So we'll get this Inteleon V. And we'll bench Inteleon V, use Capacious Bucket, get out two Water Energy. Use Ice Stance to attach two Water Energy to Inteleon V. And be careful not to click done after that, because if you used all the energy in your hand with Ice Stance, it will automatically finish the ability for you. And if I click done here, that would end my turn. The ability's already over. Just a word of advice. And now I'm going to use Max Bullet, 160 to the active. And uh, Poltegeist is one of the most useful things on their board. So I think I will take out Poltegeist since it allows them to discard Mad Partiers, which they want to do, and it also draws them cards. So we just took two prizes in that turn. Uh, pretty nice. Now, of course, we did get lucky because my opponent has not been able to draw into their energies that they need. Now, they're evolving into a Galisopod here and attaching a triple acceleration energy, which counts as three colorless energies on an evolved Pokemon, but they have to discard at the end of the turn. So hard time slash will do 30 plus 50 more for each V and GX we have in play. So that means it'll be doing uh, 130 damage. Now they're going to put more uh, more two prize Pokemon on the board. So we're definitely going to want to boss up this Dedenne at some point because it only has 160 HP. Yeah, so we could uh, we could max bullet this Galisopod plus Sinistee and then on the following turn, just uh, bosses order up the Dedenne GX and knock it out. Okay, so we've got Air Balloon, we've got Air Balloon here. Let's Training Court one energy back. Ice Dance it to Inteleon V. They have quite a large hand, but I think all I need to do to win is get another boss's orders. So I think I just want to draw as many cards as I can to get into boss's orders for the following turn. So we'll Professor's Research our hand away. There's boss's orders. That's great. Put down another Sobble because uh, Drizzle can get us a boss's orders if they disrupt our hand. We'll evolve Inteleon V Max because we need that too. And actually, we can retreat and attack with a fresh new Inteleon V Max that has not even been damaged yet. So we'll Max Bullet the active and we'll hit this since that can evolve into Poltegeist. We'll get that off the board, and then next turn, a boss's orders just wins us the game by knocking out the Den AGX for two prizes. And we're doing all of this with a post-rotation standard format deck. This deck contains no cards that are going to rotate out in September, like this the Den AGX. Um, I'm not sure if our opponent is using any other cards. Oh, they're also using Pokemon Communication and Triple Acceleration Energy, which are rotating out in September. And we're not using any of those kinds of cards. So this is purely pre-constructed, post-rotation, very, very budget deck that's functioning <laughs> honestly better than our opponent's deck that uh, has some other kinds of cards in it. Benching another to then AGX. Now, something I will add that I didn't mention earlier in the video is that Inteleon VMAX being weak to lightning makes it very bad against Picarom. And Picarom is quite a good deck in standard format right now, but Picarom will be rotating out with the standard format rotation in September, and then you won't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so I won't be winning this turn because my opponent used Reset Stamp, another card that's rotating out in September that this deck won't be worrying about anymore, but I'm also not using it to my advantage in this uh, particular match. 
So let's go ahead and uh, attach to Drizzle and then Ice Stance to Drizzle because Inteleon Stage 2 actually has some usable attacks which we could look at right now. It has the Aqua Bullet attack for Water Colorless to do 120 damage and also does uh, 20 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So this could actually help out in our damage spread endeavors and also just let us send up a single prize Pokemon here. So I'm going to evolve this Inteleon. Search for up to two trainer cards, although I don't think we really need any. And they scooped. Our opponent conceded yet again, just like our last opponent did. So here, two games in a row, I recorded these games back to back. Two meta decks, although, albeit, you know, the Mad Party deck did have some fun stuff in it. It had the Galisopod, which isn't typically seen in Mad Party decks anymore, and Chinchino for some extra draw power. So possibly not the most optimally built standard format decks, but we did play against meta standard format decks containing many cards that our post-rotation Inteleon pre-constructed deck does not even have, and they both ended up conceding. So I think that uh, shows all you need to see that this Inteleon VMAX League battle deck is actually quite good and quite usable in standard format on PTCGO. So I hope you enjoyed the gameplay and also the deck profile. Like I said earlier, if you have any further questions about this deck or anything that you'd like to learn about the Pokemon trading card game, please let me know in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon TCG content. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.